Hey podcast fans, we're going to be recording episode 200 of Talking Cars in front of a live audience in Brooklyn, New York on Friday, April 19th, and we want you to be there. Just send us an email to talkingcars@consumer.org and let us know if you can join us for this special event. Tickets are free and on a first come, first serve basis, so don't delay, secure your tickets today. We hope to see you there. We give our first impressions on the new 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid that we bought, discuss how advanced safety systems recognize motorcycles, and talk about the difference between summer and all season tires, next on Talking Cars. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Talking Cars. I'm John Linkove. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. And I'm Ryan Pulikowski. And spring has sprung. Everyone Finally. is out driving, Yay. windows down, um, which really falls into a very interesting news piece because the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety just released a study, the results from a study, and it says nearly 37,000 additional people have died in traffic accidents over the last 25 years. And the reason? Rising speed limits. Right. So, right. Um, Jen, you, you've got some, some thoughts on it, but also some data that, that talks about just how many lives we lose because of different factors. Right. So, so obviously, I mean, that, that saying speed kills, it's real. You know, the mm -hmm. faster you're going, the more energy your body has to sustain. It can't do it. So, in, an, in an accident. Right. In a yeah. crash. In a crash. So, so it's interesting. If you look at the latest fatality statistics, it's a little morbid, but in 2017, 37,133 people died on America's roadways. When you take the three most important factors, speed, 9,700, about 9,700, mm -hmm. alcohol, 10,800, mm -hmm. and a lack of restraint, meaning people aren't putting their seatbelts on, 10,000. Um, and what happens is, they're all considered human choice behaviors, and mm -hmm. they're all considered risky behaviors. Mm -hmm. They aren't mutually exclusive. So what you're saying, you know, like people that do risky does. things are more likely to drink and speed and not put their seatbelt on. Right, right. But those three together, you know, we talk so much about distraction. Distracted driving fatalities are attributed for 3,166. Not, not the, minor. Right, not minor. Right. Nobody, one is not minor, right. is the truth. Mm -hmm. But those, those big three risky behaviors are still in there. Now, the speed limits obviously are being ignored mm -hmm. to some degree, but there's nothing like a powerful fine or a hefty, you know, powerful deterrent or a hefty fine to deter people. And we've seen that laws in other things like booster seat use and child restraint use are super effective at getting people to do what they're supposed to do. Well, yeah. So yeah, I, I want to bring Ryan in on this. The IIHS number, number yeah. is over 25 <laughs> years. Right. So it's, it's not saying, well, wait, those could all be eliminated if we had speed limits. It's, it, it's the, that increasing right. speed limits over that quarter century right. has added to it. Added and we could have saved right. those. Right. Right. But, you know, Ryan, it's not just about people exceeding speed limits, right. you know, doing 60 and 55. People but are always going to do that. They're all, yeah. You know, there's always just, Again, it happens. to the risky behavior. Right. There's a lot of really high speed limits out there as yeah. well. I mean, you, yeah, well. You experience it. I did. I was in Texas a few years ago, and um, I was checking out the Treadwear course that we actually do testing on for um, tire, our tire testing program. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and the road is straight, as you can see, mm -hmm. and the speed limit's 85 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah. So this is a two-lane road, no barrier between. Um, I mean, there's also not a lot of traffic, but, sure. but 85 it's not, it's miles. It's like a county road. Kind right. Of. But, but even up here, I mean, we, we have 65 miles per hour is our max limit. People generally go a little faster than mm -hmm. that. So now... You have an 85, people are generally going to go a little faster than that because sure. there's always this tendency to push the limit. So now here you are on a road to 85, maybe 90 miles an hour. And granted, there's not a lot of traffic, but there's an opposite, a car coming the opposite direction with no barrier between you. I mean, that's, that could be even a drift over. A drift over, right. fall asleep, or even <laughs> if a, a something, a, you know, deer, whatever they have down there, jumps out right. in front of you, that's a. <laughs> That's no, a nightmare no, no. waiting well, to happen. You get a little I mean, fatigue and a little lane. Yeah, lane and I get it. I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere and you have a long ways to go. It's taking you a long time to get there. I drove out from, uh, you know, in Arizona out to Grand, the Grand Canyon. Right. Yeah, again, you have this long stretch. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first places where DRLs or just having your lights on, right. daytime running lights, was yeah. really helped. Yeah. Because a lot of times you kind of get a lot of light fatigue during the day Haze around from here. from heat off the well, around here, yeah. you know, you have a yeah. lot of cars. There's, there's not the same. You're divided. But there, you have the two lane. Yeah. And you really do see that coming yep. towards you yep. versus, you know, some of the uh, the heat haze. Heat that's what haze. I was yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and you wouldn't see a car until it's on you. Yep. Interesting point. You're talking about the high speed limits. 
So in 1995, the national speed limit of 55 miles per hour was abolished. Now, 41 states have speed limits on some roads at least 70. Seven states have some stretches of highway of 80. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking, you know, northern tier, very very open spaces. So So that is why the importance of what we talk about, this higher speed automatic emergency braking. You know, low speed AEB can bring Mm -hmm. you to a stop, avoid the crash altogether. But high speed AEB can mitigate some of that speed off. You're not going to come to a stop, but the energy to the occupants is going to be less. Right. Some of this is tough because cars nowadays go down the road very nicely Mm -hmm. at a high rate of speed. You don't even realize you're doing it. Uh, the other thing is you can save some fuel by slowing down. I mean, right. certainly cruising along at 85 miles an hour, that's you're sucking down some fuel. Yep. Definitely. You're fighting the wind. It's, you know, it's, well, it's and physics. All, and a lot of people, you know, on that point, they say, wow, you know, I, I got to get somewhere quick. Right, you know, right, I left. Right. The yeah. author of the study, his name's Charles Farmer, said driving 70 miles per hour instead of 65 saves a driver at best six and a half minutes on a 100 mile trip. Wow. Right. It's not if, not if worth you're it. running Probably six and a half minutes it. late, <laughs> set your alarm clock earlier. Right, right, right. right. So. On that note, there's a lot of good information on this report on consumerreports.org. We wrote up a, a, a whole story on it, mm-hmm. so check that out. So that's going to bring us to our next section, Cars at the Track. And we just bought a new 2020 Corolla Hybrid, Toyota Corolla Hybrid LE. Mm-hmm. Um, it was $22,950 plus the $249 all-weather floor liner. Nice. <laughs> yes, but like Toyota, you know. <laughs> no option packages, really. You, you just get the car. Right. It's a 1.8-liter four-cylinder with a hybrid and a continuously variable transmission. Jen, one of the things that Toyota's done, they've put safety features right. on, a, standard safety features on almost every model. Right, So, and, I, and absolutely we applaud them, that Toyota Safety Sense package, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, some of the big ones. I wish they would include blind spot warning. They still keep that out separately um, as part of an expensive package. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it would be great. I think people think it's in there because, you know, even we've said it's a great package to get. Right. That blind spot is still out. Our surveys say it's super popular. People absolutely attribute it to helping them avoid crashes. Mm-hmm. Would love that in there. But when I was driving the Corolla Hybrid, I was thinking back to a story of when my best friend, Karen, I don't know if she's listening or watching, hi, Karen, but when we were getting out of college, we went to buy her first car, and it was a Toyota Tercel, (laughs) 1987-ish. Toyota Tercel, three-door hatch. And I got to thinking, what, first of all, how much better this Corolla or Corolla (laughs) hybrid was than that Toyota (laughs) Tercel. That's all she could afford. She had a bunch of student loans Mm -hmm. that she was going to owe. She had a commute. It was all she could get. What a great first car this Corolla hybrid would be. It is not a perfect car. And I'm, you know, there's, there's issues, but super reliable. Mm -hmm. Not only the, the, historically the brand, right? The brand and Corollas in the past have been super reliable. Mm -hmm. $22,000, reasonable price. And that cost of ownership with reliability. I also want to add, it is the least hybrid-like hybrid I've been in. Well, so so mm. Ryan, it, it, it a lot of talk that we've had has yeah. been, well, what about Prius? Right. You know, and, and how does this one drive? Yeah, you so know, what's your experience with it? This, it's interesting because this is, on paper, it seems like a good idea. We have a the the Corolla hatch that we tested last right. year. Right. Um, this is this is that platform, and then we have the uh, Prius, Prius drivetrain, right. yep. which we know is bulletproof. Yep. Has, has been, been yeah, very very good. Great reliability. Um, so it's, you know, at first it's like, this could be an awesome, awesome car. Um, and it's not a bad car, but I, I, it's got some faults. We haven't tested it, tested it yet, so we don't know a lot mm-hmm. about it still. But um, it's a, you know, it's a good, I think it's a good idea because people that want to get a, a Toyota hybrid that doesn't look like a Prius, no offense to the Prius, yeah. this looks like a normal Corolla. It's a nice little car. Yes. And um I think that's going to be attractive to people. Yeah, it's it it's conventional looking. Exactly. You know, the, conventional yeah. sounding. I mean, I mean the, it's not quiet. Well, well, so one uh, of the issues. Some yeah. of the things. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's twenty two thousand, almost twenty three thousand. Mm-hmm. Let's just say twenty three thousand right. dollars. Um, it's loud. It's very loud. <laughs> and it's not like loud, say on the highway when you're accelerating up a hill because it has a small engine. It's loud. Regular driving yeah, around. It's got some road noise. It's it got a lot weird. of road noise, yeah. a lot of engine noise. I was on, and then when you're on electric only, so say pulling right. down some of the side roads into the track, mm-hmm. I could hear the cars going by the other direction. I could hear their tire noise and yeah, engine right. noise. So it's very quiet uh, with, with the, the electric motor running on electric. But it seems like 
not a lot of sound deadening. Yeah. You know, you, you're yeah. wondering where they. Well, that's where, where you're twenty-two thousand. Where you're getting twenty-two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> right. Also, how much yeah. how much light you know it needs to be lightened yeah. to hit the, these it, mi- it also, GPA mile yeah. numbers. I found too it the, the CVT is much like the the hatches. It flares up when you want, need a lot yeah. of power, right? Uh, which is an unattractive feeling and sense that you get. Yep, um, it gets it feel, the engine really revs yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, the RPMs rev way up and. It doesn't move necessarily that quick either, but right. um, like we said, we haven't tested it yet. We're going to find all that out exactly. But I, fi- I find it interesting, you know. So they, they do have um, a non-hybrid, uh, but yeah. manual transmission if you want. Manual transmission yes. if you want, not with the hybrid. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, but they also have a sporty version, yeah. and we liked the way the Corolla hatchback tested. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the platform is solid. Mm-hmm. You know, they actually have made it sporty. Some noise issues on that as well. Some noise yep. issues too. Yep. Um, so. It, it's it's a small car. It's a compact car. Right. Uh, but it's it's hitting the types of things that Toyota has been hitting time and time again. Not flashy. Not you know the value, value, value. Well, yeah. Right, right. Value, fuel economy, yep. and probably reliability. We'll see what happens in our survey. Way better than an '87 or so. Yeah. Way better. <laughs> well, on that note, that a 2020 car is better than an 87 car, <laughs> you know, we, we've established that. We're gonna move to questions, and we really love the questions. I mean, you guys are filling it up, guys and gals. You're filling up our Ooh. inbox, talking cars at iCloud.com. Videos, text questions, just keep sending them on. We, we get to as many as we can. Maybe we'll have an all questions episode coming up soon. Um, anyway, first one's a video question, so hit it. Hey, Consumer Reports. Rodian out of Sacramento, California. Love your show. Been watching from episode one with Jake. I just finished episode 196. Had a few questions for you. As you can see back there, I ride a motorcycle. I also have a cool off-roader. I live in California where lane splitting is legal. Do car manufacturers take into account motorcycles that split lanes in states where it's legal into their advanced safety features? Or do I have something to worry about from a courteous Tesla driver when his car overrides him? You guys were talking about Europe. Europe's got a car, Peugeot 508, that takes that into account. Mike Monticello, you live in California, you ride a motorcycle, you know what I'm talking about. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on this. Love your show. Keep up the great work. You know I'm going to keep watching. So the gentleman in the video is asking a couple things first. You know, advanced driver assistance systems, but also lane splitting. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so I we, had to look it up. I had no idea what lane splitting. Well, was. We, 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 most people have seen this <laughs> anywhere, but um, you know, motorcycles sneaking in between traffic. In California, this is somewhat allowed. Mm-hmm. It's okay to do this. Um, Not restricted at low speeds. Yeah, I, I talked to Mike Monticello about it, who who lived in California, and he says, yeah, I mean, it's there's a gray area, it's but allowed. at low low speeds or standstill traffic, it's okay for a motorcycle to sneak in between cars um, in traffic, mm-hmm. and um, so in California, this is allowed. Anywhere else, it's not really allowed. Yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. dangerous. So it's yeah. really a, it's a unique situation. Well, yeah, I mean, it's dangerous when, it's dangerous when motorcyclists are weaving. You know, right. cars are weaving as well. It's dangerous. But yeah. you know, Jen, there's some studies out there talking about how the blind spot warning or even the forward collision warning systems can detect motorcycles. And right. The statistics on that. Right. So first of all, I think it's important to both both you know, t- to his answer, lane splitting is intended to be a very slow speed maneuver. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be moving through very slow moving or stop traffic. Now, again, might confess that that's not all the, always the way it's used. You know, they'll go between the HOV lane, for example, and moving traffic in that, that divider mm-hmm. area. So, um, yes, two studies, IHS, AAA, both kind of said they'll pick them up, but it may not be as quickly as they would pick up a, a normal car. Right. So, um, I think you can't rely necessarily on the blind spot. You know, we know Tesla will pick up a little motorcycle icon, for example. Right. But it, if it's not at the same rate and that car starts to move, very few will do that automatic lane change yet. Mm-hmm. But I, I ultimately think it's back on the motorcyclist to be aware. Yeah. Um, well, don't think the, that with advanced driver right, systems that, that it more eliminates new cars, that potential. That it's yeah. going, you're, you know, it's, it's okay. It's right. still incumbent on the driver, obviously, to yeah. check mirrors, not yeah. rely on a system, but incumbent on the motorcyclist to pay attention. Right. The new Tesla Autopilot version 9, mm-hmm. um, it picks up a motorcyclist. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it confuses it with a car. Sometimes because it's a la- it's a split lane. I mean, you're looking at the table here in a sense. You know, it's it's not in right. a defined lane. Right. It sometimes throws the, the motorcycle over a car and then back in, particularly right. if it's weaving. Right. But it does pick it up. So okay. he asks, in, in particular, um, again, not infallible. Right. 
Right, yeah, as with everything. And I think the systems are getting better and better and better at detecting not just cars, but pedestrians, motorcycles, bicyclists. Mm -hmm. But so. a, a motorcycles should still assume that no one sees them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah. Because, that, I mean, they're, so they're on a motorcycle, protected. it's dangerous. Right. They're, they're not protected by a car, a steel car like we right. have. Right, they have nothing here. around them. Right. So, okay. all right, so hopefully that, that answers Very that good question. question. Um, Pierre now asks us, I'm trending to buy a car with a non-turbo engine for reliability reasons. I will be keeping that car for well over five years. I know that there are very nice cars with turbo engines, like the Honda Accord as an example, but I'm afraid of a turbo engine's reliability for the long run. What do you think? So we actually covered this uh, with our most recent uh, mm -hmm. story on reliability mm -hmm. and our findings from our auto survey, our uh, auto survey of our Consumer Reports members um, that it's not a hard and fast rule. No. You know, automakers with a lot of history, um, so Audi, for example, Audi and Volkswagen, two a liter. A lot of turbo mm -hmm. history. A lot of turbo history, right. excuse me. Right. Yeah, not a lot of history. Right. Um, <laughs> they have you know, both. A history of building turbos, they have better right. reliability. The right. Two liter turbo, uh, four cylinder that's in these cars, has mm -hmm. strong reliability in our mm -hmm. survey. Um, so there's no hard and fast rule. You know, under in five years, you're going to be under the warranty a long time. Um, it's an inconvenience if it goes bad. Right. Right. But for the most part, be under warranty. You know, avoid brand new motors with turbo engine with turbochargers. You right. know, don't buy first year technology. Technology. Exactly. But it'll be the same as if you're buying anything. Right. Avoid a first or second year model. So right. that, that's that's pretty much the answer. And it, they might be hard to avoid. I, yeah, I was there's say that. so of, many more cars popular, that yeah. are going to a turbocharged four. Right for fuel economy, right. et cetera, mm -hmm. that it, it's much harder to avoid right. a turbo yeah. They've than been it around. Used to be. Tur turbos have been around now a while. Right. Yeah. Um, but like you said, the brand new technology maybe, those engines I would stick, you know, stay away yeah, from. Sure. But and in not, general, they've been around now. So and it's not like the 80s, you know, where they're, the engine management systems, where you know, the computers that run and, and run the engine, yep. basically, they just weren't the same as today. Right. You know, if you go back to right. that Tercel, you know, <laughs> nice things have come a turbo four-cylinder <laughs> today is not like a turbo four-cylinder or even a V, you know, right. six-cylinder 20, 30 years ago. Right. right. So Absolutely. I would say, too, it's not just reliability. There are good turbos and poor turbos in performance, too. Right. You know, there's are ones that you absolutely get that lag, mm -hmm. you know, when you're leaving slow from to start a, up. Right, and, slow yep. to start up. And um, others that, that are so much smoother, so... It's both. It's reliability and performance. Yep, definitely. Yep. Worth the test drive, for sure. Yeah, worth the test drive. Check our data on right. consumerreports.org. See what we say, because we'd have it you know, broken down by model, engine. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, our next question is from Carl. He says, going to get new tires shortly, and I was hoping to get summer tires. Is that what is now called all season? I put snow tires on as main winters are tough enough that I'm not comfortable with all seasons. So now, Ryan, he also referenced that he's driving an Avalon, Toyota Avalon. Yep. So it's a... We'll consider that a regular passenger vehicle. Sure. Right. Um, so to answer his question directly, no, summer tires are not the, what they call the new all season. Um, we, there's all season tires that are can be driven on year round. He's in northern Maine or wherever. He's yeah, up in Maine. He's in Maine. There's a lot of winter up there. <laughs> um, so snow tires make absolute sense, and they know all about that up there. Um, summer rolls around. That doesn't mean you buy summer tires. Summer tires means that it's usually in the U.S. a summer tire is a ultra high performance tire that goes on a Corvette, a Porsche 911, a sports car. Should not be driven under 40 degrees, um, you know, temperature. Um, they'll wear out fast. They're sure. usually low aspect ratio. Um, so they have the short side wall yeah, and very stiff. Exactly. Um, an all season tire for this kind of car for the summer is perfect. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. And if you do you get caught in that first snowstorm or that last one of the year, you're going to be you're going to get by. Right. Um, you know, w without your snow tires, but he runs the snow tires most of the year anyway. And particularly and, with rain, right. that's where they really excel, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they just grip on dry and wet pavement. <laughs> um, you know, the hydroplane, they resist hydroplaning well, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, he's skimming over a puddle of water. Uh, and the reason I mentioned the, in the U.S., because in Europe, they, it's a different story. They have summer tires and they have winter tires. And summer tires there are come in conventional sizes, like for regular cars, right. where they're not in the low aspect ratio, um, sporty sizes. Um, so it's kind of a misnomer because it, summer as a season doesn't mean it's for any car in the summer. Right. It exactly. means it's a type exactly. of tire for a sporty car. Not so. It's a little deceiving. Good question. Yeah. Well, like Ryan yeah. says, you know, in Europe, it is much more of a, we run a winter tire, and, a, and then we run right. tires in the summer. Right. Right. Here, an all season is they 
a compromise. It's, 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 a, basic, it's right. a big. Compromise. It's a good of all, right. but not right. the best of anything specifically. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. No. Check yeah. out. Check it out. We have a ton of all-season tire test results mm -hmm. on CR.org. <laughs> We're gonna hit our final question now from Ben. I hear CR talk about how great new headlights are for drivers all the time. But as a driver sharing the road with these cars, I'm often blinded by their <laughs> low beams, especially from larger pickups and SUVs. At what point do better and brighter headlights become a hazard for oncoming traffic? Okay, don't get excited, Jen. I know you've been- <laughs> Headlights is my thing. Since we knew this question was coming. So, so you've been outside a lot late at night recently? Yeah. Moonless nights? Oh, yes. Tell oh, us, yes. Tell us what, what Ben needs to know. So, Ben, this is super timely because last week we hosted the Society of Automotive Engineers Lighting Committee. So this is all the lighting engineers from the OE manufacturers, from all the lighting suppliers, bulb suppliers. So I had all the lighting folks how many in people? the room. Just let us know. How many people? Um, it was about 40 people okay. just on that SAE Lighting Committee. And I asked this specific question because our testing we actually do an assessment of glare, the IHS headlight testing. It's all this balance of getting more light down the road so you can see what's coming versus glare. My question was, does the data show that glare is a cause for crashes or is it just a discomfort? What the data says is that glare is discomforting, um, annoying, but it is not a cause for crashes. Mm -hmm. The converse, lack of seeing distance, is a cause for is, crashes. Is that because and, they're coming on something too fast, or is it? Right, they, you just don't have the seeing distance okay. you need at higher speeds okay. to see, react, break for something that all of a sudden sure. appears sure. in your mm -hmm. headlights. So with that said, um, we are continuing to see good and bad headlights regardless of technology. We actually don't say that all the newest LEDs, HIDs, are the better headlights? Brighter, yes. Wider, yes. But not necessarily better seeing distance straight ahead. Well, some of that I was going to ask Ryan mm -hmm. is kind of, we see that a lot more because of our roads, right? right. Yeah, well, around here it's very, it's hilly and right. um, a lot of corners. So you're constantly going up and down and turning. And, you know, these, with the high HIDs with that uh, real sharp cutoff. Cut right, the high intensity. It's, you know, it's super lights. bright. Or but LEDs, right? Yeah, you're super bright. But the minute you pick up the headlights, there might be a, a herd of deer in the middle of the road or something. You, you can't see that until you get to that point. But at that point, it might be too late, you know? Right. right. And that's so. the same thing ben Ben's getting because you mm -hmm. take that and then you put it on a pickup truck or something high yeah. and that opposing where you're dropping in and out of that exactly. above and below that cut of line, it actually is, feels like yeah. you're flashing. Right. So, and there's, you know, I'm going to confess, I'm 52 years old. I can already feel it. As we age, there are real reasons, physiological reasons why your eye doesn't react as well sure. to glare. I can feel it. And I actually say, oh gosh, it's a rainy night. I'm really going to have trouble driving already. So, well, you know, um, a lot of people are able now to have surgery to correct cataracts or something, but there are side effects of that. You know, the rings that they yes. see, you know, bright light, you know, mm -hmm. lights at night dazzle. So it, it's, it's a lot more lighting on the road, in particular when you're staring ahead. Right. So my best advice is don't be drawn in. It's our natural human reaction to, to look Watching right it. at it. Right. Look away. Look at the right side of the road. It's, mm -hmm. It sounds easy. It's not easy to do. Force yourself to look at the right side of the road. Keep your lane and and try and prevent that dazzle or recovery, you know, the glare yeah. recovery from being a problem for you. That's the best I've got to give. So that's going to do it for this episode of Talking Cars. Make sure you check the show notes below for more information on what we discussed. Keep sending us those questions, those videos, their texts, talkingcars at iCloud.com. And finally, next week, we're going to have a really special episode from the New York International Auto Show. Thanks for watching and see you next time.